welcome to Cooking with Ms. Perry. I'm Ms. Perry and today we're cooking masala seasoned chicken, jasmine rice, and caramelized bell peppers and onions. Now let's not get masala confused with marsala. Masala is an Indian spice and it can probably be found in the international section of your grocery store or at your local 99 cent store. You want to first start by pulling the chicken back off your drumsticks so that the seasoning can get right into the meat. So let me get my glasses on. Now you just put your fingers underneath that skin, grab it and pull it back as best you can, and then you can actually wrap it around the bottom when you put it in the oven. I always like to wash the meat before I season it. Now we're going to put our cuts into it. At least four into each drumstick. The reason that I do this is so that it cooks very quickly in the broiler all the way through. Plus it's going to allow our paste to really permeate the meat. And now we're going to make our paste that we're going to rub into the chicken drumsticks. We have our bowl here our marsala, I'm sorry, it's masala, I always pronounce it wrong, white pepper, cumin, cinnamon, garlic powder, sea salt, I'm gonna guesstimate about an eighth of a teaspoon. We're going to mix that all up really nice in the bowl. Now we need to put an oily agent with it. We're going to use mayonnaise. One heaping tablespoon. Two heaping tablespoons. Three heaping tablespoons. Now we're going to mix this all up. I got the idea for this from my neighbor, Mrs. Mon. She's an Indian lady, and she used to make all this really wonderful food and send it up to my house all the time for myself and my boys. And although I never knew exactly what her recipe was, I remembered all the flavors. So I put this together. All right, you can see that we have a very nice thick paste. This we're gonna take and rub into our chicken drumsticks. Take your chicken leg, a nice little scoop in your hand. Don't wear any rings, girls. And we're just gonna mix this all in. We want to get in the cracks of this meat. Wrap our little fatty skin up and onto our broiler. Quite messy work, kind of fun, I think. I love it. Now we're gonna put our chicken drumsticks over here to rest. Let that seasoning soak in really nice and we're gonna get our water started for our rice. Rule of thumb for rice, one part rice to two parts water. That means two cups of water and one cup of rice. But we need to get our water to a boil first. I've already measured out two cups of water here, so let's get our flame on and we're gonna put it on high. Thank you. 
put the lid on it, help it get going a lot quicker. Now let's go clean up the other side so we can start on our next dish. All right, let's get our knife and start chopping. And we're just gonna slice these lengthwise. Some nice strips. We've got all our bell peppers chopped up. Now we're gonna chop up our onion. 99 cents store onion. I got a whole bag for 99 cents. Chop it in half. And we're just gonna do these nice little lengthwise cuts. Same thing with this piece. And we're ready. Well, the lid on our uh, pot of boiling water is rattling, so that must mean it's time to put the rice in. Let's get that started. Oops, let's not forget a towel because that lid's gonna be hot. Oh yeah. One cup of rice added to, uh, ouch, ouch. Watch out for the lid. Added to our uh, two cups of boiling water. Oh yeah, it's hot now. Now, when I make this jasmine rice, what I do is pretty foolproof is, I put it, of course, in when the water's boiling. I let the water come back up to a boil. I put the lid on and then I turn the flame off. Usually after, it's, after it sits for about 15 minutes, the rice will be done to perfection. And that'll be about the time our dinner's ready to eat. Our rice comes quickly up to a boil. Once again, the lid goes back on. And let's turn that flame off. <laughs> All right, we're having a great time. I'm starving hungry. So let's get that chicken in the broiler. Now this is a top broiler. So it's gonna go into the actual oven compartment. Let's turn it on. Broil, start. This particular recipe cooks very, very quickly. That's why we like to use the drumsticks. Um, but it's perfect to go in the barbecue too. Oh yeah. Mmm. Yum yum. Can't wait. You want that chicken to be as close to the flame as you can get it. Uh, you're gonna keep a little bit of an eye on it. As soon as the top of it gets to looking crispy and brown, you wanna pull that tray out, and then we're gonna flip those drumsticks so we get a nice crispness all around the whole entire leg. All right, let's get our bell peppers, our onions, our butter, our salt. Let's get that going. Mm, it's gonna be so good, I can't wait to have it. Move our hot pan over here and let that sit. Over. Of course, we have to start off with olive oil and some butter. Just a tablespoon. That looks to be about a tablespoon, don't you think? The butter. We've got our oil and butter in here. You can see it's sizzling a little bit. That means the skillet's hot enough. Let's throw everything in. I don't have my favorite tool with me today for scooping up everything, but that'll work. Uh, sea salt to taste. This would also work very well in a wok. If you like to cook in a wok, you could stir fry these up in a wok. The object is to get them soft to get them a little browned on the edges. They'll soak up the sweetness of that butter. Mmm, I can still smell that chicken cooking. Our vegetables are cooking nicely. Let's check on that chicken, see what it looks like. Oh yeah, 
ready to flip. See with that nice color there? Turn those over. I sometimes use chicken thighs when I cook this recipe. Back in the oven, probably another um, five, eight minutes, depending on your individual broiler. Mmm, look at that. Very nice caramelization on those vegetables. They are done. Let's turn those off, and I'm going to set that onto a cool burner. And our chicken should be done. Ah, oh, yes, it is very, very much done. Look at that. Now, let's check our rice. The way to tell with the rice is if all the moisture is evaporated from it, which it is. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful rice. Perfect rice. Perfect. From here, we just need to add our frozen peas. They'll defrost in the hot rice. And then we're ready to plate. This is about a half a cup of peas more or less. The measurement doesn't have to be exact. It's really to what you prefer. And truthfully, it just makes the dish look prettier. Mix it in there. And we're ready to plate. Now we've got our masala seasoned chicken, our caramelized bell peppers and onions, and our jasmine rice. Mmm, can't wait for a bite. Mmm, delicious. Now don't go away because after dinner I'm going to show you what to do with those leftovers. See you in a bit. Mmm. Dinner's over. I am stuffed. But like I promised you, I was going to give you a leftover recipe for that chicken. And we do have some leftovers. You know, I hate to throw any food away. I don't like to be wasteful. And I know that some people don't like leftovers, but you can change it into a whole new meal they'll never know. Are you ready? I've deboned my chicken. Now I'm gonna just chop it up into some smaller pieces. Now we've got your chicken chopped up. We've got grapes, about a quarter cup. We've got celery, about a quarter cup. We've got green onions, about a quarter cup. I like nuts quite a bit, so I throw nuts in whenever I can. I've got almonds here about three tablespoons of almonds, but you can use walnuts, pecans, or not use almonds at all. Now we're gonna throw this all into the bowl. I've got a little curry powder here, just enough to pinch, and that's all we're gonna start off doing, and I mean literally a pinch. We're gonna sprinkle it in there. I think I want some more. Pinch a little bit more. Curry powder is very powerful stuff. Another pinch. And that's four pinches. I think that's all I'm going to put in there because I don't want it to be so powerful, but that's all you're tasting. <laughs> Lastly, we're going to add our mayonnaise. A tablespoon. Two tablespoons. We're going to mix this, mix this all up. Have a really nice curry chicken salad. It's really good after it's sat in the refrigerator overnight because you get all those seasonings mixed together. The chicken, the grapes, a little bit of curry powder, a little crunchiness of the celery and the almonds. That's exactly what it should look like. Have a wonderful afternoon, folks. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.